The world's largest passenger plane, the Airbus A380. It's an aircraft that has had many questions surrounding it, from its commercial viability in the industry to its longevity. With production slamming shut last year, the question always hangs over the series. Was it a failure? Let's explore that today on Globetrotting. The Airbus A380 was initially thought of during the early 1990s, would you believe? However, it was only in 2005 when we were first introduced to the aircraft. From there, the plane underwent heavy testing and more delays to its entry into service were experienced. In principle, though, it would become the world's largest passenger plane and therefore have the ability to carry 500 plus passengers across a complete two decks, something that of course Boeing did not have with their 747, sticking to the iconic hump design. The A380 was targeted at being an aircraft that would change the industry for the better, but the reality is Airbus got the timing on said aircraft, similar to the 7478, totally wrong. By the time the A380 was primarily being delivered to airlines, these carriers were already after something different in the form of your A350s and 787s, the two efficient wide-body aircraft that have taken the world and industry by storm. In addition, infrastructure made the introduction of the A380 tricky. Being such a gigantic plane size-wise, many airports had to develop new gates, update terminal infrastructure, and even go as far as widening taxiways to accommodate such a plane. What did this mean? Well, Initially, it was an aircraft limited in terms of its destinations, but then again, it was always an aircraft that would be limited, thanks to the mission statement of the plane. Airbus with its A380 wanted to develop the hub and spoke model further, but over at Boeing, you see, the intention was to not solely rely on this model with their such large aircraft, despite introducing the 7478. Ultimately, Boeing won out on that. And the hub and spoke model now that we've seen Emirates predominantly used isn't as present as it once was. Emirates uses over 100 of the Airbus A380s, but for them it works. However, they're very much an exceptional case that does not represent the direction the industry has primarily headed in. So in this sense, it led to the A380s downfall relatively quickly, with airlines stepping away from such a business model. The A380 though, once again, I have to mention, does work for Emirates, thanks to also their ability to fill up the aircraft on almost every flight. They do this through their hub and spoke model. But for the majority of carriers, no matter how significant their presence is on a market, filling a 500 plus seater plane, say daily, is very complicated. And the reality is, if the plane is not full, the airline won't reap the reward seen from the Airbus A380, like maybe Emirates will have. Freight of variants can be also the driving force behind an aircraft's success and also longevity in the industry. Airbus, despite interest, never moved forward with their A380 freighter. In turn, while production has ceased for the A380-800, Boeing has continued their 747 production, albeit they're wrapping up now. And while their Dash 8 performed underwhelmingly regarding orders and interests, the Dash 8F continues to be produced to this point. Many believe Airbus missed out on the boat for development of an A380 freighter. However, there still would have been very similar questions and concerns of such a plane, just as we witnessed with the A380 passenger variant, from its size, efficiency, and ability to generally access airports around the world, and much more, with of course freighter aircraft not always going into your main hubs, being London Heathrow and such. Therefore, even further works would likely need to be done to airports around the globe, which of course means for high costs. Some can label the A380 as a mistake or an idea that was just thought about at the wrong time. Both of these are very valid criticisms because upon further research and such, it becomes overwhelmingly evident that upon the study and creation of the A380, they misunderstood the market. And in addition to misunderstanding what made the 747 so special once upon a time, attempting to replicate that in the 2000s resulted in money, time and valuable resources going to waste. With the 1990s being essentially full of speculation around how manufacturers would combat the 747 success and just what was next, believing that the A380 was next and that's why they proceeded with it today. 
This aircraft, though, is an engineering marvel. Being the world's largest passenger plane, there is a lot to appreciate. Alongside its sheer ability to just carry hundreds upon hundreds of passengers on a routine flight across many airlines' networks. But there are many issues with the aircraft that prevented it from having the impact Airbus may have envisaged at one stage during the early parts of the program. Qatar Airways' CEO called it the biggest mistake the company has made. Although what I should say is their CEO has been known for rather outlandish comments, and given their ongoing legal dispute with the European aircraft manufacturer involving the A350 aircraft, it doesn't come as a complete shock that he would be incredibly vocal towards his distaste for the A380. Trends have shifted, and what airlines want and do have also changed. Nowadays, airlines are more in favour of offering your smaller, wide-body aircraft on multiple routes multiple times a day. While yes, the A380 allows for easing pressure of slots, given the ability to fly one plane a day instead of, say, multiple, for the carriers, their operations now can be a lot more efficient. What it also can offer is the convenience of having multiple flights a day, which benefits the passengers that are ultimately going from point A to point B, maybe through another point, and need to link up with a flight during the night instead of the morning. What is not necessarily written on my script, but something I did want to mention is also the effects of the global pandemic on the Airbus A380. During the pandemic, we were startled by seeing the mass retirement of the 747s, but alongside the mass retirement of the 747 at many crucial carriers, we also witnessed the grounding and retirement of many airlines' Airbus A380 fleet. It was an opportunity for these airlines to get rid of an aircraft that they did not deem useful for the future of their operations. Now, while of course some airlines have welcomed back the aircraft, the reality is that many others still are yet to do so, and of course are still contemplating said decision, or have only brought half back. It's a startling fact, but the pandemic really was a killer for the A380 program. The world's largest passenger plane, however, was a success in terms of passenger experience, with airlines battling it out to offer the best possible cabin product, from first-class suites unlike any other to having a shower while flying at 30,000 feet. Emirates has done a phenomenal job at making the A380 their flagship by marketing it as a plane to the masses and ensuring that it's an aircraft, regardless of your level of interest in aviation, you know what it is. In addition, the A380 has allowed for innovation, with return in the upper classes of the golden age of travel and flying. It's an engineering marvel, and passengers love flying on it, that's without a doubt. It's a shame though in terms of commercial success, and the overall impact, timeline and more, what the A380's fate was. It was a culmination of issues, some out of Airbus's control, and some very much in their hands, and it all resulted in the A380 being what it is today, not as present, with production no longer occurring, and one airline carrying the large bulk of airframes produced, delivered, and in the skies today. For those that are massive fans of the A380, you'll be pleased to know that Emirates intends on keeping this aircraft on through to the 2030s, meaning we will see the A380 flying for a lot longer, even if it only ends up being with the one said airline being the Dubai-based one. What are your thoughts on the world's largest passenger plane? Is it a failure in your eyes, or is it a mix of both? I'd be very interested to hear your take down below in the comments. Thanks very much for watching this longer analysis video here on Globetrotting. We very much appreciate the support, and we'll see you next time.